William Lane Craig says that he knows that God exists first and foremost because he feels the presence of the Holy Spirit in his heart. Alvin Plantinga says that the belief that God exists is what he calls a properly basic belief. Because believers have such a strong intuition that God exists that belief in God is warranted even in the absence of empirical evidence. Craig and Plantinga both claim that this is a valid way to know the truth. In fact, what they are talking about sounds less like truth and more like what Stephen Colbert so brilliantly called truthiness. It's a belief regarded as true not through empirical evidence or logical deduction, but rather through gut feeling. The problem with this attempt to justify belief is that it raises the question of how we distinguish between legitimate claims that a belief is properly basic, that is, that it does not require the support of evidence, and illegitimate claims that a belief is properly basic. If someone claims that they believe that they are from outer space and that one day aliens will come and take them back to their home planet, and when pressed for evidence they declare that this belief is supported by an intuition so strong that it is properly basic, there doesn't seem to be any way to disqualify that claim. William Lane Craig once explained that one way in which you can distinguish a belief that was the result of divine revelation from one that is not is that beliefs that are really divinely inspired will be held regardless of evidence presented to the contrary, while beliefs that are not divinely inspired inspired will be abandoned in the face of evidence to the contrary. Because this person is just having a psychological experience rather than a genuine experience of, of God's self-authenticating spirit, that, that will crack under the weight of the evidence and he will change his mind. Now he's of course hoping that the same will happen to you, but if you do have a genuine veridical experience of God, then that shouldn't happen with you, uh, and, and you may be able to bring that other person to your point of view. This, however, is a poor way to distinguish the truth from falsehood because a belief held in the face of strong evidence to the contrary could still be nothing more than a strong delusion. The proponents of this view call it reformed epistemology, although an epistemology that makes it more difficult to distinguish between warranted beliefs and delusional ones seems more deformed than reformed. It also seems pretty clear to me that Plantinga and Craig dislike the notion that intuition of this kind is less reliable than arguments and evidence, and they want to construct a new epistemology that considers it to be at least as reliable. In fact, Craig seems to believe that it is even more reliable. If, however, the only way to distinguish veridical intuitions from false ones is the persistence of those intuitions, then there seems to be no way to distinguish between genuinely divine experiences and incorrigible delusions. 